Okay. <laughs> Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, Justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of reflection for our servicemen and women throughout the world and for all those who died in the last week, particularly Joseph P. Riley, loving father, grandfather, great grandfather, brother, and uncle, Patrick F. Guido, devoted husband, father, grandfather, brother, uncle, World War II United States Navy veteran and prominent Scranton funeral director, and their dear families and many friends they leave behind. Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Here. Mr. Rogan? Mr. Loscom? Here. Mr. Joyce? Mrs. Evans? Here. Dispense with the reading of the minutes, please. Third Order 3A. Minutes of the Composite Pension Board meeting held August 28, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3B. Audit status from Robert Rossi and Company, received August 29, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3C, Controller's Report for the month ending August 31, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3D, Agenda for the City Planning Commission meeting held September 25, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, Received and filed. 3E, Tax Assessor's Report, Hearing and Appeal Results from September 4th, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3F, Tax Assessor's Revised Commercial Reports, Hearing Dates to be held October 17th and 24th of 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. Do we have any clerk's notes tonight, Mrs. Craig? No, Mrs. Evans. Thank you. Do any council members have announcements at this time? I have none. Elm Park Church, located at the corner of Jefferson Avenue and Linden Street in Scranton, will present the program An Early History of Our Church and Community on October 7, 2013 at 6.30 p.m. Speakers include Gina Aleo, historical interpreter who will provide an overview and insights. Tom Costello, who will offer an illustrated presentation of American artist P.W. Costello, whose works are displayed in the church. And Sandy Connell, who will present personal family accounts of William Connell, former president of the Board of Trustees and U.S. Congressman. The public is invited to attend. And that's it. Fourth order, citizens' participation. Our first speaker tonight is Brian Fulton. Hello, everyone. I'm Kristen Schmansky, and this is Brian Fulton, and we're here on behalf of Scranton Reads. Uh, Scranton Reads is a community reading event which is organized by the City of Scranton and the Albright Memorial Library every year. Each year during the month of October, citizens of Scranton get together and read a great work of literature. They participate in book discussions, special events related to the chosen work. Each year we have two main goals. The first goal is to encourage reading amongst people of all ages, and the second goal is to bring the community together through a common experience. 
Scranton Reads One City, One Book enhances the feeling of community by bringing people from all different backgrounds together and uniting them through the love of literacy. This year we have chosen Stephen Crane's The Red Badge of Courage, which Brian has a copy for each of you to hand out. And we hope everyone can help us um, celebrate our 11th year in Scranton Reads. There's a listing of events included Thank in the book so and everything is online on our website at scrantonreads.org. So you could go on and check everything out there. Indeed. So. Thank you for all of the wonderful work that you do and for continuing this program year after year. Um, as a former English teacher, I'm certainly an advocate of reading. And I'm hoping that this does encourage everyone in the community, young and old alike, to develop a lifelong love of reading and learning. So thank you for again for everything that you do to further those causes. Yep, thank you. And as a former social studies teacher, I applaud the the choice. Very yes. nice. Yep. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Ron Elman. Council. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I, I, I sincerely hope that Council investigates Mr. Miller's uh, suggestion last week. We've had 20 years of Pell, and they've never brought one positive thing in 20 years. Here's something in five minutes that's worth uh, going into. As you know, all I do is talk to people in and out, wherever I go all week long. And it just seems like the public feels that you people aren't listening to, to us anymore. You know, half the people in the city are, are, are suffering and in low income. Last week, you were worried about the, the Mall Association. Let them go broke. Let them give us some money back for crying out loud. We're facing all these increases and we, we have to worry about the mall association. They're just a bunch of deadbeats. I was at the mall last week to, to pay my kids uh, TV. There's nobody there. I don't know how you get people there. I don't wish it upon them, but just, they just lack something. I don't know what it is. Has any of you all ever sat down and wrote a letter to the governor about this city? Yeah. No. Why? All he gets the news is, is what he reads in this newspaper, I guess. It's full of lies and distortions. Well, you know we, what? Did, we did write a letter to this the governor. This is a spur of the moment thing. If one of you will get in your car and go down and make an appointment and see the governor, I will pay for it. I will pay your gas, your motel, your food, because this city's been good to me. This, I love this city. and I'm like Mr. Bolas. I want to give something. I can't afford to give him a dinner like he does, but I can afford to pay for a trip. Something's got to be done about the university and the colleges. They're stealing us blind. And all that happens is tax and tax and tax. They got a bunch of stooges that write letters to the paper expressing their exuberance, how fortunate we are to have, have the university in our city. They, nobody, nobody seems to, to bring up the fact our children that are going to go to these universities sooner or later are being deprived of tax money for a good school system. It, it's just an endless circle that that nothing is being done about. You know, every week this Oliver Morgan writes a letter and they print it. Just, just unsubstantiated nonsense. I write a letter, they throw it away. They don't print it. That's censorship. A censorship is, is an enemy of any newspaper, a legitimate newspaper. Yesterday, Oliver Morgan had an article 
that we should get rid of Mr. Barletta and, and, and uh, Mr. Moreno. His boss is the one that has caused all the misery that half the people of this city are facing. His boss is the one that has caused the third of the people, the third of the children that, that he, he, he cries about with his crocodile tears. And, and nothing is being done. You people just won't attack the university. And I realize how powerful they are. I think they, they, they say all power corrupts absolutely. When, when the court system can say that Spruce is an adequate corner and doesn't need anything right now, there's something wrong. I, I, a week ago, I was in traffic. The kids are all over the place, and they're just going to the across. Can you imagine what an eight-story school building is going to be like at that intersection? They need a crosswalk on the second story or something. Well, thank you for your time. And if one of you would take me up on it, I made it from my heart. I will pay every single penny you bring me back. At a, 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 you don't look interested. What about you, Jack? I just don't think we're going to get Somebody anywhere take with this me government. Up on it. We've already, uh, I think Mrs. You know Evans was going to. I'm good for, I'm good for the money, I promise you. <laughs> I, I know, you. I know you are. It's Thank a matter you. of, you're welcome. We wrote the governor several times in order to have just the uh, 2010 census um, certified Sorry. by him, which is what is to occur by Pennsylvania law. And that took about a year before the governor finally responded. And we wrote over and over again. I've met many times with Senator Blake. We had public caucuses here with former state representatives and current state representatives. We've asked them for their assistance. I put before them several initiatives that they could pursue legislatively in order to financially help this city. Their answers were no. Can't do that. So I, I don't know, um, I don't know if city council or a member of city council would even receive an appointment to see the governor. But I'm, I'm now perhaps, I guess, uh, I'll, I'll just be frank with you, Mr. Elman. I'm very jaded. I don't see the help coming from the state. You know, I, I don't see that they're anxious to assist us because you know, rightfully so, the state of Pennsylvania should be stepping in and directly financially assisting the city of Scranton for the role it played in using this city as a test case in the Pennsylvania Supreme Court. We are unique. There is no other city in Pennsylvania, distressed or not, that this state used in a courtroom. And when the award came down, the state walked away. And I asked the state to help us then because of their very active, very public role in that case. And you know what I was told? No, no, no financial help coming. So that's why I guess I'm, I'm feeling as I do, Mr. Elm, and I'm sorry. Um, our next speaker is Doug Miller. Good evening, Council. Doug Miller, Scranton. Um, Good you know, evening. Good evening. We're not too far into the meeting, and already a lot of uh, very interesting points have already been raised this evening. And uh, I'd like to sort of pity piggyback on uh, some of the things that Mr. Ellman uh, just spoke on, and and I do agree with them. Um, it is, it's, it's a long time coming for the state to come in and, and intervene and assist this city. And it seems like, you know, we're, we're, we seem to be talking to the wall repetitively. And, you know, we, we just don't get anywhere with this. Um, you know, we had our senator here. We had our representatives here not too long ago. And, you know, you, you thought we were, we were getting somewhere, but it seems as if all we did was just kick the, the can down the road a little further. And, you know, we were yes to death, that's for sure, throughout that caucus. Um, but no help came from it, and I, and I think that's a very troubling thing. Um, 
I, I, I do believe you're absolutely correct, Mrs. Evans. I, I do feel that uh, the city of Scranton has been used as a guinea pig, um, you know, a scientific test um, you know, in terms of our relationship with Pell. Um, they certainly aren't looking out for our interests, and, and, and I'm very upset about that as well. Um, you know, these, these you know, resources that are supposed to be here aiding the city are doing the complete opposite. And they all have an obligation to assist us. Uh, I think it was you, Mrs. Evans, a while back you alluded to, uh, you made a good point. We are, um, in an instance, the dying child or the sick child. And the parent, which is Pell and, and our state legislators, have an obligation to come in and, and try to find a cure so that this dying child doesn't die off. And unfortunately, we're dying. And, you know, we're, we're now reaching a point where we're trying to determine whether or not it's necessary to pull the plug and I, and I hate to see it come to that point but we're getting there um, just when you think you see some light at the end of the tunnel and, and you think we're getting somewhere we, we, we take three steps back and um, I really feel sorry for, for for this present council because I know you've gone through a lot of obstacles and um, you've had a lot of things go against you. Um, you you know you've obviously tried to do some positive things and, and you should be recognized and acknowledged for that um, unfortunately the cooperation hasn't always been there and and when you don't have that cooperation from those that are, have an obligation to cooperate and assist, um, you don't get too far. Um, but, you know, I, I, I do believe we can overcome these, these challenges that we face, uh, but it is getting late. And if the state's not willing to intervene, I, I do think that, as Mr. Allman said, we need to continue to put pressure. Um, I know it's easy to, to say that, and it's easy to send letters and, and try to attempt to, to contact our state leaders. but. You know, they have an obligation, and, and, and they're down back in session now, and, and their focus should be fixing struggling, distressed cities. Um, you know, it's my understanding they're down there, you know, concerned about reducing the size of the state legislature. I mean, you know, it's, it's priorities. It's the little things. I mean, where, where, where are we going here? Um, you know, we, we need to address these challenges. We're, we're looking at pension shortfalls. You read the paper today. The city's on the hook for $6.3 million, and, you know, it doesn't look like we're going to come up with that by the end of the year, and that's another debt that we're going to be carrying over to next year. So it's just it's a trickle-down effect. It just keeps continuing, continuing, and, you know, when we think we're getting on the right track, as I said, we, we take a step back. And, um, you know, you look at this union settlement, the judgment uh, against the city where they can seize assets, um, you know, the unfunded debt borrowing. Um, you know, tonight I take a look at the uh, mandate impact summary from last summer when we uh, council implemented the recovery plan. Um, and uh, the other night at the Taxpayers Association, it was brought to our attention that, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't even believe the amusement tax to this point has been collected. And we, uh, 250000 for 2014, and we haven't collected a dime of that. Um, and, and these are things that we're expected to realize. And uh, have been part of the recovery plan, revenue that's much needed, um, that we haven't seen a penny. Um, and, and I'm hopeful that we can we can get to the bottom of that and try to determine why that has not been collected. Um, but there are a lot of issues moving forward, and when we get into budget season here, looking into next year, you know, in terms of revenue and where we plan on trying to generate revenue. Uh, last week, I, I did propose a, a suggestion to council in regards to a 1% tuition tax on post-secondary education. Um, I, I would, however, like to clarify, uh, there was a uh, misstatement made last week and it's hard when you're in the audience sometimes to to hear what individuals on council are saying but to clarify uh, on the collection of the tax um, it, you're not taxing the institution as we know you can't tax a, a nonprofit entity um, the way it works is the tax is collected by the institution from each student at the time of registration and then at that time it's remitted uh, to the city uh, and that's how uh, the collection works I just wanted to clarify that for the public but you know, at this point in time, the, the financial challenges we face, um, I don't believe that any idea that's brought forward by either the public or council, I don't think we could say it's a bad idea. We need money. Um, it's, it's as simple as that. Uh, unfortunately, we don't, we don't have the ability to go out and pick money off trees or, or print money ourselves. Um, we need solutions. And, and as I said last week, it's going to take a vision, um, creativity, and uh, a clear goal to overcome our challenges, and I, and I firmly believe we can do that. Um, but we, we really need to put our minds to work and, and together um, overcome these challenges. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, just for a point of clarification now, uh, the state, some state legislators, I believe, uh, 
had formed a committee and uh, their purpose was to revise or revamp Act 47. And though nothing yet is official, it appears from what we're all reading that um, the state would provide distressed cities such as Scranton an option of several tax increases or new taxes that it could levy in order to assist it in um, successfully exiting Act 47. Now, I know, for example, this council had been very interested for many years in a payroll tax. And, a, and that's something worth looking into. But we discussed the fact that initially, in the first year or two, that's revenue neutral. So you're not going to see the benefits of that immediately. Um, as far as the other taxes go that are being proposed, Scranton, again, is unique in that we have one of the highest wage taxes in the state. So clearly, uh, I don't believe that the governing body of the city is going to even consider an increase in the wage tax. Um, as for the others, I, I really can't speak to that, but my own opinion is, because I will not be here next year, but my own opinion is, the solution is not simply in taxing, taxing, and overtaxing the same group of people. The solution is, as I said earlier, the state has a responsibility to come into the city and assist it financially. The state jumped in immediately after that Supreme Court decision and made the necessary changes to the law so that no other distressed city would ever be negatively impacted by a court award as this city has been. So everyone else was taken care of except for Scranton, the guinea pig. And for Scranton to be able to dig itself out of where it is now in addition to all that the city government can do, it needs the financial help of the state of Pennsylvania who put us here. And until that happens, I don't know how successful all the new taxation in the world is going to be because the people in this city, the, the population has been shrinking and the people in this city just can't support all of this financially it's impossible so if the city or rather if the state would really like to help this city i have the answer for them but they don't want to hear it and when they do hear it they tell me no so anyway enough of my pontification and bob bolus you are next I had to get it off my chest. Good evening, Council. Bob Ball of Scranton. Good evening. Good evening. Ron, I'd Good like evening. to thank you for the compliment. But so you understand, it's like people like Ron, Wes, and others that show up at our dinner that really make it happen. The volunteers and the people, they just make me look good at the end. But interesting enough, we're giving you a new bridge in Scranton also. Keep that in mind, too. When one of our vehicles had hit the uh, bridge on Music Street, we were blamed for all the people not making money and their businesses shut down. But ironically, almost eight months later, they decided to start repairing the bridge. They started on this side of the bridge, coming out of Scranton, something we had absolutely nothing to do with. So I find it kind of comical that when people point a finger, they should know which way to point it. Nobody put any protection under that bridge. Cars ran under it for seven, eight months. No netting, nothing to prevent anything that could have fallen because the bridge was so dangerous. It was a bridge ready to fall down. Unfortunately, our vehicle impacted it, and we've taken responsibility for that. But the district attorney's office likes to play games, so they took 20 some thousand dollars of money, and we're all broke. The city, county, we all have problems, and paid Boots and Hanks Towing over 20 some thousand dollars to remove the machine from our property and store it. Where's the common sense? Where's the smoking gun? 
They tore the bridge down when our engineers were coming in to examine it and destroyed all the beams. Creates a spoilage issue because we couldn't inspect it properly for the stress that it needed. So there's a lot of games played in politics. And Janet, the reason I brought that up is, is exactly what you're going through with the stake. Council is speaking out on behalf of the people. I went to court, as most of you know, and filed a lawsuit against the university. Not because I have a vendetta or an issue with the university. It's about the dollars and cents we don't have because we've been taken advantage of, to put it bluntly. There was a footprint. Boyd was very elegant in presenting the Scranton plan with the university plan. When you cross that line, you go to a commercial zone. You should no longer be considered tax exempt or nonprofit when you cross that line. I went to court for a reason, was to stop it. Use the wisdom of Solomon, which we believe the judicial system should have approached with, since the zoning board and the university did absolutely nothing to determine the volume of people that will be coming out of an eight-story building instead of a four-story building. You're not changing the footprint out, you're changing it going up. How many people were killed in the World Trade Center? They didn't get killed because it was out, because it went up. I expected the wisdom of Solomon by the judicial to sit there and say, wait guys, you're asking me to decide right or wrong here, but it's your responsibility. Go back and bring me a study, both of you. I can now make an intelligent, justifiable decision. Not throw it out. So I went to court and challenged for a reconsideration of that issue. And the court turned around and said, excuse me, get out. You have no standing. You didn't intervene. To the failure on their part, I did intervene because I came here and challenged the council, as everybody knows, about voting against it to tear the building down before the zoning board had their hearing. It was overruled. Some members of council went and voted to tear it down, the cart before the horse. But we're still pursuing it because we want a judicial decision on fact not on political issues, not on the powerhouse of the university. Everybody wants to see progress, myself included. I build buildings, I'm a progressive individual, and so is everybody here. But the bottom line is, don't take it from us. They get a $700,000 grant for equipment for the building. They're spending 40 some million dollars on it. They need a grant but yet they don't contribute a darn thing to the city other than a token few dollars. Yeah, I'm upset over it because you're a bully with money. You're taking advantage of the people in this city and you're not giving anything back. A fee against students? Fine. Too bad. I paid for my education, so did everybody else here. They didn't give us anything. If they're that concerned about it, then reduce the tuition to the students that have to pay the fee. They're giving something back. That's the difference here. This is a group that give nothing and take everything. And that's what upset me. I want them accountable for the people, for the impact that it takes on us as we try to drive out there and all these kids are running out in the street and we don't have the traffic control or the skywalk for them to go across to prevent an injury. One fatality, one critical injury, and everybody in the city is accountable for it because they let it happen when it could have been prevented. Those are my issues the health and safety and the economic impact to all of us in this city. Sure, there's jobs and their unions are going to make money. But when the job is over, where are they going? Back on the unemployment line because there are no other jobs. These are the issues that we need to do. My other last part of this is we have the ability to impose an impact fee. I would suggest the fee of a million dollars on an impact. Go out there right now and try and get around the corner. There's police out there, you can't get here, come here through the day and forget about trying to make a time frame to get somewhere. It's an impact fee, it's never been imposed on the university when they tied us up on Mulberry Street. Think about it, and they still got Mulberry Street literally screwed up a car's parking on it by the University of Scranton. It wasn't meant to be. So let's put a motion on the table to impose an impact fee 
and the University of Scranton. We have a police car sitting out there right now directing traffic. We're paying for it, not the university. That's the difference here. Let everybody be accountable, and I don't care who they are or what political affiliation they are. Stop bullying the people, and that's why I speak out. Thank you, Mr. If you Bullis. would do that tonight, Mrs. Evans, I would appreciate seeing a motion on there for an impact fee. Let's get justice for the people. Thank, Thank you. you. Les Thank Spindler. You. Good evening, Council. Les Miller, City Homeowner, Resident. Good evening. Taxpayer. Good evening. Uh, I've been meeting the say this for quite a few weeks, too, and I agree. I think Mr. Bowles got the shaft from Pendot. There were parts of that bridge that were torn down and replaced that weren't even touched by his truck. I just think that bridge had to be replaced, and they used Mr. Bowles as a scapegoat to fix the whole darn thing. And it's, it's, it's really a shame. They made an example out of him. Uh, moving on. I have to agree with Councilman Rogan. He made a statement last week that the removal of Mr. Moore from HARB was retribution for the way he voted. I absolutely agree with that. And if he voted the other way to keep Leahy Hall, I think this would have been a non-issue. As sure as I'm standing here, I'm positive of that. It never would have been brought up. We have bigger fish to fry in this city to worry about removing someone because he might be over his limit in how many years he was there. We're in danger of losing city assets to the unions because we can't get any money to pay them. And this council's worried about removing somebody because of the way they voted. I, I think the priorities have to be put in more perspective. Uh, his appointment, yeah, it did violate a city ordinance, but. There are other violations of city ordinances too, which nothing is done about. For example, there's a, an audit due every year, and it's never on time. The 12 years I've been coming here, it's never been on time. It's, I don't even know if we have the one from this year yet. It's due in May. And uh, nothing is done about that. So uh, it just seems like this council is picking and choosing what they want to do. Uh, I was always in favor of this council, but I, I, like I said, I don't think it was right to remove Mr. Moore from that position. Uh, if you want, want to remove somebody, the people that should be removed is the Pennsylvania Economy League. They, along with Chris Doherty, are the reason we're in the shape we're in. They've given him free reign to borrow and spend us into almost bankruptcy. And, uh, those are the people that should be gone, not, not Mr. Moore. Taking him out of his job didn't benefit this city in any way. PEL should go, and uh, maybe we'd uh, be better off in this city. We need to, we have to get somebody to, to loan us money, but I don't know if that's going to happen, because uh, the interest is just getting higher and higher on the amount of this award, $21 million. But uh, I don't think the unions would sell any assets because that would be cutting off their nose despite their face. But uh, I don't know what the answer is going to be because as is evidence, we, we can't get any money from it. There's no banks that want to give this city money anymore. So uh, I just hope something's worked out. Uh, okay, last week, uh, Councilman Rogan brought up Senate Bill 76. I spoke to uh, Senator Blake because Councilman Rogan said he's not on board with that. I saw Senator Blake Sunday. To make a long story short, he said right now he's not on board with it, but they did hire two people to do a study on it. And he said if those two people come back and tell him that Senate Bill 76 will work, he said he'll be all for it. So I hope that's what happens. Lastly, the commuter tax. I'm totally on board with the commuter tax, but I hope the city is a lot more prepared this year going into ask the court for that than, than it was last year. Mr. McGowan went in last year, made a fool of himself and the city. So uh, I think uh, Councilman Joyce should uh, be in charge of this. And I, he's very smart as far as numbers are concerned. And uh, I, I, like I said, I hope we're a lot more prepared this year than we were last year. Thank you for your time. Thank, Thank you. you. Lee Morgan.
Good evening, Council. Good evening. Good evening. Um, the first thing I have here is, look, I really respect every individual who comes here in this council, but, you know, sometimes I just don't agree. And, level, level, you know, putting a fee on students, I just totally disagree with. And I know the kind of situation the city's in financially. These children were in diapers when this, when this community went under Act 47. And, you know, I think it's time to really stop trying to, at least as far as young adults are concerned, trying to strap them with the responsibility of this debt. I think that we should offer young adults opportunities, all right? And I don't think we should penalize them. I think our answers are somewhere else. Mrs. Evans, you talked about being used as a guinea pig for Act 47. I agree. I just think that um, desperate times and desperate situations are going to propel maybe uh, the wrong ideas to come forward out of desperation. And I, and I could never, ever support levying a tax on a student, regardless of, of what the reason was. Because I firmly believe that young adults you offer opportunity to. And I think that the residents of this city and across this commonwealth had an opportunity to vote and to make the changes necessary to this form of government, to make it responsive to the needs of the residents of this commonwealth. And it just didn't happen. And maybe it's time to consider a new format for change. Maybe it's time to proceed into court and ask, ask the court to grant some assistance. But that would be based on law and what we could actually do. I don't, I don't want to disagree with Mr. Bolas here, but I don't think Solomon has anything to do with the court. I think it has to do more with Caesar. The court has to do with power and privilege. And, and I think that's the thing that we face. When, when, when you read case law and a lot of other things tied to the court, that's the opinion I get. But I really think that, you know, we should never sell the Scranton Sewer Authority to pay the judgment for the employees. Okay, the money we owe the city's employees should never happen. Allegedly, that's an idea that's being floated. I think we that's one asset we shouldn't divest ourselves from. I think that we should make yearly payments to the city employees. As far as the pension's concerned, I think the city needs to move away from a pension plan. I think that we need to come up with a plan where every week we will put in the employees' pay their pension contribution so that we will never, any, ever again be behind the eight ball and let them invest it the way they see fit. I mean, it's time for the next, and I understand where this council is because you're going to leave soon, but it's time for the next council to come in, take these seats, change the way the pension plan works, and we need to give the employees their contribution every pay period so that it's, it, the requirements and the obligations are met. And then what they do with that money is entirely up to them. Because to be honest, and I think that uh, council hit that again today. The residents of this city have just no more money to give. There's nothing left. The city's really faced with a situation where even now residents are leaving the city and abandoning their homes and putting them up for sale. And you know, levying all the taxes on students and all the other ideas that are going to come forward, we can't tax ourselves into, into prosperity. We have to change the format and the way, the direction we're going in. And I just think for too long we've relied on allegedly, the PEL coming up with a plan. But we all know that when the first recovery was plan was offered by Mr. Doherty, it wasn't a recovery plan. So we followed a failed plan to nowhere. And then the PEL comes into a hearing with the three-judge panel acknowledges that they're not even interested in the city recovering. They want the bondholders to be paid. And then the problem we find ourselves in with our employees I totally agree that the state got us involved in a fight that they wanted us to win so that they could propel what they intended to propel forward. But the city was left with the bill. So what we've got to do is we've got to think out of the box and we've got to change our direction and we've got to stop waiting for the state to come forward. We've got to try to trigger the court into being an advocate for the city because laws have meaning even to legislators. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
John Bradley. Good evening, uh, President Evans, members of council. I'm John Bradley. I'm an attorney from uh, Philadelphia. And I am here just, just to let you know that there is an organization being formed, the Northeast Pennsylvania Landlord Tenant Association. And it is being formed because a number of landlords have concerns about various uh, rental ordinances which have been passed by local governments in Northeast Pennsylvania. Pittston, East Stroudsburg, Wilkes-Barre, and yes, Scranton. Uh, we see a number of problems with the rental ordinance which was passed last year. Some of them we simply think are harsh or unjust provisions, but that's a matter of politics. Others we think are possibly unconstitutional. I don't wish to elaborate any further at this point, but I would hope that I would have an opportunity to meet either with your solicitor or with uh, members of council to discuss our concerns in more detail. And uh, we're going to be having a public meeting in uh, Pittston. This is primarily of interest to Pittston residents, either October 3rd or October 5th. We have a website, www.nepalta.com, Nepalta. Uh, dot com, so you can look on there and you will get some idea of what our concerns are. I just wanted to uh, mention this to you at this time to make you aware of the fact that, there, that we will be talking with you further about this ordinance, possibly challenging certain provisions in court. We hope we can avoid that. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes our speakers list for this evening. Is there anyone else who cares to address council? Good evening, council. Dave Dobson. Good evening. Good evening. Resident, taxes paid with no federal help. Not for uh, mortgage uh, interest, not for uh, taxes paid or whatever, or PA taxes paid, no help. I don't fit into the uh, the other uh, the, the the 51 percent or whatever. Uh, okay, uh, I had an idea the other night at the taxpayers' meeting, and I have one ear here, and hopefully uh, uh, help indigent people with reverse mortgages in the tax office. A lot of times this is just left go and uh, basically when it gets into uh, somebody's in a nursing home with Medicaid you might never see any of that tax money because it all gets very confused and, and uh, if the house gets sold or taken by Medicaid you know it's, it's, it's over. It's about $6,400 a month right now for a nursing home, so the money goes awfully fast. Uh, Nonprofits. Uh, we mentioned before about a profit, and it's not really a profit. I just wanted to note that. Uh, nonprofit is called a surplus when they have $16 million a year like the university left over at the end of the year, it is called a surplus in tax language or in legal uh, rhetoric. Uh, and I had an idea parking downtown here. I come down quite frequently and I throw a quarter or two in a meter. And I noticed that it's way bigger, the space I'm buying is way bigger than my car. So if possible, could we someday look into compressing the spaces adding more of them and then maybe leaving one or two for poor old Bob Bolas and his pickup truck and <laughs> you know uh, but have like a pickup truck or a large vehicle only space and you could possibly get three spaces out of two in a lot of instances so it's just a thought and uh, okay uh, in the paper today and I won't bash the times because they were against it, but there is a benevolent dictator law on PA municipalities before the end. What that would do 
is all of us people uh, that work hard to get people elected at the polls and donate money, we would have a dictator come in and push all you people aside and he would he could actually auction off in Detroit they are auctioning off uh, are trying to auction off parts of their Detroit museum pieces uh, they're actually doing an evaluation on a Detroit museum and a lot of these laws are ALEC laws American Legislative Exchange Council they're template laws that are just passed, like the Trayvon Martin law, which a young person lost a life, probably unjustifiably, and a liar and a coward got away with what he did. And uh, 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 now Pennsylvania adopted a similar law. I'm not anti-gun, but I don't want somebody shooting me over because they thought I took too much of their parking space, you know? Uh, they were scared or something, you know, to say something about it. And uh, I might mention uh, that they could possibly even come in and sell Nayog Park or whatever under the, the laws they have done it in Michigan. So it's something you really, really have to watch out for. And uh, anything you can do, it's if, if, even if you, you know, I don't know, sending letters doesn't do much use, but uh, the county today in the paper donated 700 grand to the university project. What of Scranton? That's why I like to ask the uh, county commissioners, you know? I went there one time, and by the time uh, Ms. Ma Schumacher and I got through security, uh, uh, the meeting was over. <laughs> They practically had us do the strip tease there. <laughs> um, and there's also some other laws with all of these uh, proposed tax shifts uh, with, uh, last week I mentioned about how, uh, how these uh, uh, states are giving away taxes, uh, PA income taxes and stuff, and allowing them to be deducted out of their employees' checks. And pocketed by the corporations and we're talking about piling on more and more sales taxes all of this is tax on the small guy it's all tax on the small guy nothing about the Delaware loophole nothing about people listing their address in Barbados and it, it's just very egregious it's 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 pretty sickening and one other note uh, I don't want to bash anybody but uh, Hedge funds are the people that are investing in water companies and sewer companies, so it's something you've got to be cautious of. Uh, and I'll make it quick. Uh, we have a new Trans-Pacific Trade Pact uh, that was secretly negotiated that would uh, surrender our sovereignty where a foreign company could sue the government for uh, rejecting their product on safety grounds and so forth. And uh, that's just what we need. Uh, you know, we don't want to feed anybody with food stamps, but we want another trade pack so we have more and more. What are they going to do when the, it's the 55% uh, instead of 47? And we have the USIS. It's a background check service. And two of the people whose backgrounds were checked was Mr. Alexi, who massacred 12 people last week. He had a background check by this cor privatized corporation. And Mr. Snowden, which in a way Mr. Snowden did me a big favor because I've been telling people for years I don't want your stupid radical uh, uh, emails, you know, and it's being captured on, uh, and I don't want somebody thinking that I'm part of your silly organization. So, uh, bok bok for USIS and the trade packs are both parties, so both parties get it and it's a shame because we can't afford to, to be any more jobless. Uh, who's going to pay taxes? Thank you. Thank Mr. you Jones. and have a good night. Thank you. Madam President, if I could just comment on one thing. Certainly. It's probably been 30 years since I looked at the deed from Lackawanna Iron and Coal to the city of Scranton for Nayog Park. Uh, but 
I believe that in the event there's a reverter clause in it, that in the event that uh, was ever divested from the city of Scranton, it, it would revert uh, to lack of one iron and coal. So any attempt by the police and the firemen, at least this is how I remember it, to take Nayog Park and try to levy on it for the judgment uh, would be totally ineffectual uh, because it would revert, the property would revert to lack of one iron and coal. I believe right now that the PNC Bank is the trustee of all of the assets of um, of the uh, former Lackawanna Iron and Coal Company. As I said, it's been about 30, 35 years since I've been through that deed. Uh, I went through it at one time for a specific reason, but um, without doing any, any further investigation of it, uh, I believe that, that that's what would happen, that that property would be immune, it would revert uh, to Lackawanna Iron and Coal to the trustee, which would be, pen would be uh, PNC Bank now. Thank you, Attorney Hughes. Oh, yes, good evening, Marie Schumacher, citizen and taxpayer. Good evening. Uh, good evening. <clears throat> uh, first of all, though it's not on the agenda tonight, I would like to state that I agree with Mr. McGough on uh, increasing the rehab dollars for low and moderate income homeowners instead of first time home buyers. Uh, I think that uh, they're very deserving. Um, with respect to the um, the money owed to the firefighters and to the public, uh, the police unions, uh, I would like to ask one thing. I first of, of Mr. Loscom, I know it's been long enough that I'm sure all the numbers are worked out. I would like to know how that breakdown is. I mean, it seems to me that the um, that what the the plan called for was like a two or two and a half percent a year ceiling on increases. And I don't know how that could have gotten to the numbers that we're talking about currently uh, as a result of the judgment. So I would like the breakout of, of what the award is for, if you have that or if you yeah, have that. I haven't been privy to it and, myself. And how many people, how many employees are... Um, are included in that are they only from those that were employed as of 2002 through um, through the time of the court award other than of course the the chief who I guess his retirement is paid uh, is tied to the current chief so or to the what the workers are getting but I would like a breakout of that if that's possible um, and with respect to the award itself, I think uh, you should ask Governor Ed Rendell, former Governor Ed Rendell, to intervene. It was his administration. He was the governor. It was his appointee at DCED, and especially if he's going to be running again. Um, because, I mean, it's a shame. We're, I mean, not only are we being taxed out the walls, and it's only going to get worse, but the equity in our homes is is just dropped like a rock. I mean, unless you want to give your home away, there's no way to escape Scranton. We're all prisoners if you own a home. And it's it's very sad. Um, and I apologize. I promised to get some things in that I mentioned last week. I did not get it done, but I will. I will definitely get to it. Um, I would like to know why the Scranton Redevelopment Authority is assisting, Mary, is assisting Marywood to obtain a $4 million uh, grant for a library of the future. I'm certainly not against the library, but I'd like to know when the uh, Scranton Redevelopment Authority became the um, Scranton Dunmore Redevelopment uh, Agency if they can't find anything within the confines of Scranton to help, um, I, I think they need to be replaced. Um, and Mr. Joyce, I believe we have received something like a million and a half dollar racing revenue, and all of it has been dedicated to street paving. Is that correct? Um, can you yes repeat no? that exactly? Oh. I'm sorry. It, yeah, we, we've received a million and a half at one point, five hundred thousand, and another point, a million dollars from the, the gambling, from the racing. Um, 
I would like to know, and, and it was all dedicated by council and probably the administration to street paving. Mm -hmm. uh, and I would like to get a list of the streets that are to be paved with those monies. Okay. And is that the correct figure? Yes, I, I believe I believe it was that it was that amount or somewhere roughly in in that ballpark, and I will try to obtain a, a list of streets that will be paved with those funds for you. Okay, and then I'm going to skip over to this because I think it's important. Um, I I know I read in one of the articles that our new parking meter. Uh, Um, people are going to be taking uh, pictures of license plates and I would like to know because I I think we have a right to privacy and in Pittsburgh they are doing that and the photos of license plates are being stored for 30 days and are considered a public record making it possible for some motorist travel and parking habits to be tracked just with a simple um, open records request so I don't think that is lawful I don't think it's constitutional and I would like to know if the city of Scranton is is doing that or its employee okay thank you I'll be back next week thank you, thank you. is there anyone else who cares to address council mrs. Craig 5a motions Um, Councilman McGough, do you have any comments or motions tonight? Nothing this evening. Thank you. Thank you. And Councilman Loscombe, do you have any comments or motions this evening? It makes two of us. <laughs> really nothing this evening. And Councilman Joyce, have you any comments or motions tonight? Yes. Uh, I just want to speak briefly on a few things. Um, just to let everyone know. Proposals will be open in City Council Chambers on Monday, October 21st for the 2014 Tax and Revenue Anticipation Note for up to $16 million. So I'm hoping that we have a, uh, a number of bidders this year. Second of all, um, I apologize I was ill last week, but I uh, did have the opportunity to speak to the mayor a little bit about the upcoming budget and we talked about a number of issues um, one is the commuter tax um, that's going to be something that's pursued obviously as you know the city of Scranton has to go to court for that uh, it's projected that this will bring in 5.7 million dollars to the city coffers if the city um, is granted permission by the court to enact such a tax. Also, uh, there's been some dialogue between um, Mayor Doherty and uh, Senator Blake about uh, the possibility of obtaining extra liquid fuels money uh, for 2014. Uh, in the range of uh, approximately $2 million or so. And if this money was obtained, um, I, I guess in uh, the mayor's conversation with Senator Blake, he uh, said that um, it would be earmarked to pay um, Scranton Parking Authority debt, which is currently being paid for out of our general fund. And it's projected that this year we're going to end up paying well in excess of $2 million. Um, we spoke about uh, refinancing debt as well. Uh, this is something that I believe uh, should be done. I know uh, in speaking with our city clerk, uh, Mrs. Craig, uh, about the uh, recent Pell meeting, I understand it was brought up in Pell. Uh, it, it doesn't seem like they're for the idea, but, and they said it would be hard to accomplish. Now, uh, in the process of uh, all of this, I, I've also spoke to uh, Mike Judge uh, a few times, who is, who was actually, um, who's actually a financial advisor, and um, Scranton City Council had previously passed an ordinance 
for him to serve as a financial advisor um, on the city's behalf. And he mentioned an interested group uh, in putting a proposal together to borrow the uh, necessary funds to cover the MMO for this year, as well as the uh, Supreme Court Award, and the um, possibility of refinancing debt in 2014. As of this point, um, I'm not sure if his agreement has been signed or not uh, to work with the city. There's been some sort of holdup in, uh, in the law department office, I believe. And um, I would like to defer to Solicitor Hughes to explain that a little bit more because I know that Solicitor Hughes has been very involved in this um, agreement or getting it completed. No, thank you, Mr. Joyce. Uh, I really haven't been involved in the agreement. Um, right. I, I, however, I'm... I worded it a little bit wrong. Okay. But I, I, um, Case Con has submitted its agreement to, the, to Mr. Kelly, um, and the ordinance that approved the hiring of Case Con as financial consultant to the city authorized the appropriate city officials to execute a contract with CaseCon. Um, from what I understand is that um, the agreement, there has been a discussion between Mr. Um, between Attorney Kelly and um, Mr. Judge. He did revise the agreement, was sent back and before Mr. Kelly would authorize the execution of it, he wanted Mr. Judge to state and to divulge of who the clients are or the potential purchasers, and he wants a letter uh, as to what the proposal is. Uh, Mr. Judge says until he has a contract, he's not going to disclose that. Um, I did discuss this with the mayor, and I said that the way it is right now, that there is absolutely no activity on any financing by the city of Scranton uh, for the police and, arbitra police and fireman arbitration award. That's because Janie Montgomery Scott, who has underwritten previous bond issues with the city, um, and I believe certain council members were at the meeting, demanded that the city the governing, well, they actually said council, but it would be the governing body because the mayor would have to sign it, adopt an ordinance that they would fully implement the uh, recovery plan as proposed by Pell for the year 2014 in its budget. Um, it was my advice that we would not do that uh, based on the fact that uh, they would have a commitment that the city of Scranton would have to raise taxes to the extent that Pell has demanded for 2014. Janie Montgomery Scott then stated that they would not take any further action on underwriting any municipal funding uh, on the bond issue until the city adopted its budget uh, in December. And they would see what that budget is, and then they would probably go forward uh, with the bond issue for $26 million. Uh, so between now and we'll say December 15th, since the budget has to be adopted by December 15th, that there is absolutely no activity going on to finance the Police and Fireman Arbitration Award. Um, it's in limbo. Uh, Mr. Judge is a financial consultant for the city, has gone out and through his contacts has two possible groups of investors that are, that are at least willing to discuss the financing of the Police and Fireman Arbitration Award. Uh, I believe that, I don't believe, it's my opinion that Mr. Judge is totally correct in his attitude in stating that he will not proceed any further 
until the contract is signed and that he has revised the contract. I have seen the revisions as had, as had the city's municipal underwriter, uh, Stevens and Lee. They agree with the revisions and to right now I have no idea where, where it is, but uh, I did talk to Mr. Judge on Wednesday and he has heard nothing uh, regarding the, uh, his contract that has been revised. I know that he and the mayor did discuss it. I believe it might have been earlier in the week or at the end of last week. Um, and Mr. Judge, you know, told the mayor exactly, you know, what he would do and that he does have, I believe it is, two groups uh, that he could bring to the table to discuss with the city this financing. But he's not going to proceed until he's authorized, until his contract is signed so that he does have the commitment from the city um, that his interest would be protected. And that's where we stand right now so that I believe that the police and firemen, that that award, uh, in the best case scenario, if all the stars align right, uh, probably might, could possibly be financed sometime in January of next year, but not before then if we proceed on the track that we are, if Mr. Judge does not, if the contract with Mr. Judge is not signed. Uh, anybody else have any questions? I hope Just I answered. Currently our interest is accumulating monthly quite heavily on that award. Well, it's right now it. since it's been reduced to a judgment, the, the interest right now is 6% per annum on that, you know, on that award. So right now it's in, in the city solicitor's hands? Yes. There's nothing we can do to push it any, any harder. Council <laughs> adopted the ordinance appointing Case Con as a financial it. advisor to the city uh, to obtain the financing. Yes. Right? The mayor signed it. That ordinance is in effect. I don't know the number of the ordinance, uh, but that was adopted uh, at the beginning of the year or sometime I think before March. Uh, to put the financing together. And at that time, he was working with Janie Montgomery Scott. And, you know, things were going fairly well with Janie Montgomery Scott until all of a sudden they demanded that the city carte blanche say that they would just do whatever Pell says and raise taxes to the extent that Pell said. And I think that was like 117% for next year. And council said, we're not going to do that. And as a result, Janie Montgomery Scott took the position that they have to have that to go to the investors in order to sell the bonds. So they, they said they're not going to proceed any further. And this goes back, we're in September now, uh, I believe this goes back to July, June or July, uh, when we had the meeting with them and what they demanded uh, that council uh, adopt legislation to fully implement the recovery plan. And council said no, at which time they said, we'll see you in December. Kind of like the song, see you, you know, <laughs> in, in September, now the summer's through, you know, but showing my age. But anyway, that's, uh, you know, that's where we are. And puts the city in, right now, in a, in a bad spot with the police and firemen. There's that award, and it's been reduced to a judgment. Okay. Thanks for the update. And all, all it would take is that with that agreement uh, that has been revised and it's been approved by, with, you know, by uh, Stevens and Lee, by uh, Brian Kozolanski, uh, who's the city's underwriter. I mean, the uh, city's uh, finance. He's the city's legal counsel on, on, the, on the municipal bond offerings. Um, and I did talk to Brian about it. In fact, I talked to him. I believe it was Tuesday, and he was going to get in touch with the mayor and see where it was, and I haven't heard back from Brian. Okay. Thank you for the update. Thank you. And, I, you know, I, I don't like to bring up internal issues, but um, I believe that this is something very pressing and very important. Um, at this point, we're faced with the situation where uh, we, ha we have a judgment filed against us. Uh, we owe $21 million 
between the police and fire unions. That's increasing at $100,000 per month. And um, we have an obligation to pay uh, the, M the uh, MMO this year, the, the minimum municipal obligation. And if we don't pay that uh, by December 31st, we have, um, we have a possible penalty of over $500,000 which would be the projected 8% interest uh, that the payment would uh, gain over that period of time. So uh, with everything in mind, I'll try reaching out to the mayor uh, to see you know, why this is taking so long and if there's some amicable way that the agreement could be signed and that an agreement could be reached between both parties because if we have a financial advisor telling us that there that there are two groups interested in looking at uh, the borrowing for the MMO uh, the borrowing for the Supreme Court award and the possibility of refinancing debt for 2014 I think that those avenues need to be explored and I think that the sooner uh, those avenues are explored, the better, because obviously the budget is going to be coming our way soon. And we have to know exactly what we're in store for. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Good evening. During the week, I was contacted by a city resident who reported street basement and property flooding in the 3200 block of Augusta Avenue in Scranton. Augusta Avenue is only two blocks in length and there is only one storm drain located at the right end of the 3200 block while the road itself is pitched to the left. Lemon Street and Gaston Place which lead onto Augusta Avenue have no storm drains and stormwater travels onto Augusta as a result. Further, road deterioration has occurred at the intersection of Lemon Street and Augusta Avenue. Although street flooding had been an issue for many years, it wasn't until this past summer that homeowners' basements flooded, the foundation of a garage was destroyed, and yards flooded. Also, it is important to note that this type of increased flooding did not occur until after the construction of a new building at the nearby Johnson College. Consequently, homeowners met recently with two representatives of the college to discuss the problems. However, the only action taken to date was the arrival of the city street sweeper on Augusta Avenue to clean the dirt and debris left behind after storm water subsided. Therefore, Mrs. Craig, I'd like letters sent to the city engineer, Mr. Eugene Barrett, executive director of the Scranton Sewer Authority, and Mr. Bill Kelly and Ms. Katie Leonard of Johnson College on behalf of Scranton City Council requesting examination of the flooding problems on Augusta Avenue, a written report of their findings and recommendations submitted to City Council and the Mayor, and a meeting among the engineer, a representative of the Scranton Sewer Authority, a representative of Johnson College, and the affected homeowners of Augusta Avenue, Lemon Street, and Gaston Place to determine a satisfactory solution. And that's it. 5B, no business at this time. 6A, reading by title, file of council number 48, 2013, an ordinance authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to apply for and execute a grant application and if successful, a grant agreement and accept the funds related thereto through the BJAFY 13 Edward Byrne Justice Assistance Grant Program. Local solicitation in the amount of $23,391. You've heard reading by title of item 6A. What is your pleasure? I move that item 6A pass reading by title. Sorry. Second. On the question? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. Seventh order, 7A, 
were consideration by the Committee on Public Safety, Resolution Number 41, 2013, ratifying and approving the execution and submission of the grant application by the City of Scranton Police Department to the Pennsylvania Department of Community and Economic Development for a local share account grant, Monroe County, in the amount of $146,467 for the City of Scranton Police Department for the acquisition and installation of the Community Surveillance Network System at Scranton Police Headquarters to enable the police to monitor cameras 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to accept the grant, if successful, and disperse the grant funds for the City of Scranton Police Department acquisition and installation of the community surveillance network system. What is the recommendation of the chair for the Committee on Public Safety? As chairperson for the Committee on Public Safety, I recommend final passage of item 7A. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Yes. Mr. Loscombe? Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare item 7A legally and lawfully adopted. If there is no further business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. This meeting is adjourned.